Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today for our session on CK12 simulations and Flix interactives. We're coming to you live from CK12 offices in Palo Alto, California, in the heart of Silicon Valley. I'm Lindsay, a member of the CK12 team, and I'm going to be moderating today's webinar. So before I introduce you to my coworkers, Katie and Sonia, who will be demonstrating our Plix and simulations today, um, just want to make sure everybody is comfortable with the Certified Educator Program and the Zoom windows. We are kind of midweek on the second week of our program. Um, if you still have any questions about accessing our assignments or resources in Google Classroom, you're welcome to put those in the Q&A window. Um, or ask us at the end of today's webinar. Uh, you guys are off and running in the chat window. Um, thank you for introducing yourself, telling us where you're, where you're joining us from and what you teach. Uh, a hint for the chat window though, do make sure that you're sending your messages to all, attend, all panelists and attendees so that everybody can see your messages. If you just send it to panelists, we're the only one who can see your greeting. All right, we have a session resource page. We're gonna put this in the chat window for you guys to access. Um, these are just some handy reference pages that we have created for you that you can print out if you'd like. You can use it to follow along during the presentation or you can access it at a later date as a reference page. Okay, um, let me go ahead and introduce you to my colleague Katie and she's gonna begin our presentation. Thanks, Lindsay, and thank you to everyone who joined us today for today's session on CK12 simulations and Plix interactives. Today, we are going to highlight three different types of interactives. We'll scale up from the, manip the manipulatives found throughout the new CK12 interactive flexbooks to the diverse Plix to the full portal simulations. Interactive flexbooks allow students to actively experiment with math concepts within the book itself. We will highlight science and math clicks, which stands for play, learn, interact, explore. This tool allows users to animate ideas through simple interactions. Also, we will be discussing our science simulations, which enable learners to discover the scientific principles that govern a real world setting in a fun and interactive way. Before we get to the core content of the webinar, we would like to find out a little bit more about your familiarity with these interactives. You'll see a poll here in a few seconds that will prompt you to respond to a question. So here's the question. How familiar are you with CK12 simulations and Plex interactives? You can select all answer choices that apply. I am new to them. I use Plex occasionally. I use simulations occasionally. I use Plex frequently and I use simulations frequently. I'll pause for a few seconds to let you finish answering this poll. Remember, please select all that apply to you. Awesome, thank you so much. Okay, it looks like a lot of you are new to our interactives, so this is a great time for us to tell you all about them. All right. So now let's move on and discuss interactives. In this first section of the webinar, I'll introduce CK12's newest books, the Interactive Plex books. Next, let's talk about Plex Interactives and Plex Corner. Our goal is to get you ready to try interactives in your class the first week of school. CK12 recently released Common Core Aligned Flex books aligned, filled with interactives. This is a section from the Algebra 1 book. Students can read through the text, look at pictures, and manipulate graphs, figures, and equations without having to leave the book. In this book, the interactives are designed to be an integral part of the lesson, not just supplementary. This is cutting edge online textbook technology. Interactive flexbooks are online textbooks that are populated with digital manipulatives and Plex interactives, which we'll go into in depth later in this webinar. We currently have Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2 interactive books up on the site. Each curriculum is rigorous and fully aligned with Common Core state standards. Like everything at CK12, the books are free. 
To find the books, just scroll down to the bottom of the CK12 homepage and click Common Core Math under the Buy CK12 title. You will find this link at the bottom of many CK12 pages. The link takes you to a web page with this URL. The functionality of the interactives are tightly integrated with each course. For example, this interactive is designed for a lesson on comparing function types, linear, exponential, quadratic, and rational. The lessons in the interactive flexbooks are also full of real world applications and plicks. Plicks are similar to the embedded interactives that we just looked at, except plicks can be addressed outside of the textbook. Plicks have more features and they cover a wide breadth of math and science concepts. You can learn more about the interactive flexbooks by joining the Common Core Math on CK12 webinar tomorrow, which is Thursday, July 19th at 9 a.m. Okay, now let's check out Plix. Plix stands for Play, Learn, Interact, Explore. It is a visual learning modality that allows users to animate ideas in a concept through simple interactions. We have over 1,130 interactives that span both math and science concepts and can be filtered by subject, keyword, concept, or standards. Also, Plix, like everything offered by CK12, is free to all users. All you have to do is sign into CK12 to access them. After you've opened up a Plix, the first thing you do is read the description on the left. The description explains what the interactive is about and provides directions on how to interact with it. Next, use the interactive by following the prompt in the instructions. In the interactive, you can explore the concept. If you need to start over, there's a refresh button at the bottom that you can use. After you finish the interactive, click the challenge button below the description. This opens up the challenge questions. The questions often build upon one another to help students reach a deeper understanding of a concept. The final question is a discussion question that you can use for a class conversation. This is a great place to think about differentiating learning by having students try the first few questions or work their way through to the higher level thinking and discussion questions. As a side note, don't worry about trying to write down all of the teaching strategies that we mentioned. A full list was posted earlier in the chat window and we'll also send it as a follow up to this webinar. Along the toolbar at the top of the place, you'll see that there are even more features. We will discuss more of these features as we go. And now let's dive into a Plex. This Plex is about lunar phases. The description of this Plex includes a prompt on how to interact with it. Notice that it says to drag the red point. Moving the red point changes the phases of the moon in accordance with the labels on the slider. At the top right of this Plex is an orange button to assign to class. You can assign Plex to students in a CK12 class group by clicking on that button. If you want to learn more about assignments, feel free to ask us in the Q&A window. Let's look at another Plex for a second. Before we explore the Plex itself, you can see in the top right the options to give feedback and adjust the size of the text by clicking the icons in the upper right corner of the screen. You'll notice that this Plex about rules for dilation has the same description prompt area, the simple interaction and challenge questions. This Plex uses two of the most frequently seen question types, multiple choice and select all that apply. If students are struggling with a question, they can often find hints to help answer the questions. Note that if you get an answer wrong, you'll see the option to show the correct answer. Once again, this is a learning, not an assessment tool. So students will be able to get immediate feedback and guidance when they attempt a question. Students can also use the learn more option to read about the matching concept and gain a better understanding of it. Encouraging students who are struggling to access these resources is another great way to personalize and support student learning. So now that you've seen two clicks, you may be wondering where you can get your hands on them. 
you can access Plix through the website on any computer or tablet with a screen size of nine inches or larger. You can also use the search bar to find content and modalities including Plix, or you could open Plix from within any concept. You can access Plix through the circular Plix icon on the homepage. Alternatively, you can jump directly to the Plix browse page using www.ck12.org slash Plix. Let's see what that looks like. Once on the browse page, you have a few options. Remember to sign in if you haven't, and then you can choose your branches. This will help you filter your Plix according to the areas you're teaching. If you've done this and you want to update those branches, you can click on Change Branches. In addition to searching on the main site, you can search within the Plix Browse page. Here you can search for a title, concept, or even CCSS or NGSS standard. You can find Plix in all branches of math and science. To achieve this depth of coverage, we've developed some really diverse Plix. Some Plix are exploratory based, while others check for student understanding. Some Plix are abstract and others are based in the real world. Let's dive into a few examples. These exploration based Plix are sandboxes in which a student can play around and experiment with an idea. In the distance between two points taxicab distance Plix, Students explore two different ways to find distance between two locations. In the Ohm's Law Plix, students explore how Ohm's Law affects the current in the circuit. A great teaching strategy would be to have students explore a Plix and then share their different experiences and what they learned with each other. In some Plix, like these, students can get feedback to check their understanding of a concept. The structure of water Plix allows students to rotate water molecules to form hydrogen bonds. In the law of cosines Plix, students find the missing side lengths of triangles using law of cosines. These Plix could be used as a review of a concept so students could see how well they understand a concept before an assessment. In many Plix, students can manipulate graphs, diagrams, or variables. In this sine and cosine Plix, students can explore how the values of trig functions relate to a given angle. In the refraction band gap Plix, users change the band gap of a substance to see if a photon can fit through. As a lesson, you could have students screenshot a few different states for a graph or set of variables and explain what changed and how the change affected the graph or situation. Some Plix use real world content text to teach math and science concepts. In the Rainforest Map Quest Plix, students can locate villages on a map using a scale. In the Rate of Dissolving Sugar Plix, students observe what happens to a sugar cube in tea as the temperature changes. For these real-world Plix, try having students brainstorm other applications of a particular concept, or even design their own Plix to address a concept. As you've seen throughout these Plix, there's a number of different ways to have students work with and use Plix. In class, you could use them as a warm up, exit pass, or to explore a concept. At home, as a homework assignment, or students can post answers to Plix questions on CK12. To differentiate instruction, using challenge questions, learn more, and explorations. To foster a conversation, the last question of each Plix is a discussion question, and some lead to Plix Corner. Okay, so I've mentioned Plix Corner a couple of times now. Let's talk about what it is and how to find it. The CK12 Cafe is a place where you can ask, help, and share with other users. Just click the link to Cafe at the top of the CK12 homepage to get there. We're going to enter Plix Corner where users answer intriguing Plix discussion questions. Here's a great example of a discussion in the Plix corner. The Plix math question of the week was from the sets and symbols size of infinite sets Plix. You can assign the Plix featured in a Plix corner post and have your students join this conversation and discuss their ideas with classmates and other students across the world. 
One of the standards of mathematical practice is construct viable arguments and critique the reasoning of others. The Plix Corner is a great place for students to discuss their reasoning about a topic. Actually, each week CK12 features one math Plix and one science Plix to ask questions of the week. We've been noticing that more and more classes are leaving answers to Plix questions in mass sometimes with notes of encouragement from their teacher. If you'd like to see a specific Plex feature that you want your students to respond to in Plex Corner, let us know. On the next slide, I'll show you how to get in touch with us. I would like to challenge you to get involved. Try out Plex and the interactive Flexbooks. Share interactives that you love with your students and other teachers. Tell us at CK12 what you think by reaching out to us a Facebook, Twitter, or email the Interactives team directly at interactives at ck12.org. If you are interested in creating your own Plix, send us an email. We're opening up the Plix creation tool to a few select teachers. Give it a shot. All right, have fun exploring our new interactives. So I've told you a lot about Plix. Now it's your turn to find a Plex that you could use in your classroom. Press escape from the Zoom window, open up your internet browser, and go to ck12.org. For those of you staying on the Zoom window, you can watch me find Plex on the CK12 site. All right, so here we are at the CK12 homepage, and it's time for your challenge. Navigate from the CK12 homepage to the Plix Browse page. Once you're here, you scroll down past all the branches until you see this nice button right here for Plix. And here we are at the CK12 Browse page for Plix. If it's your first time on the Plix Browse page, or if you're not signed into CK12, you will be prompted with a tutorial on how to use Plix. With that, this might be a good time to stop and see what questions we have coming in about Plix. Before we move on to the second half of this webinar where Sonia discusses simulations, please join us back in your Zoom window or participate in the chat and Q&A. All right, We're I'm gonna check in on what's been happening in the Q&A window. Um, Katie, we do have a couple of questions that look specific to the Plix that you guys just talked about. And then a lot of our users are posting questions that we're probably gonna have Sonia field after she does her simulations demonstration. So any of these that are on Sims, we might just kind of keep in the Q&A window for a little bit and let Sonia do her demonstration first. But um, Katie, two questions that are for you. Um, the first one, it just says no interactive flexbooks for science yet with a question mark and then the second one is about taking new requests for Plex. Okay that's right no interactive flexbooks for science yet. <laughs> um, I think that's all I'm gonna say about that. Keep you keep you posted. Um, and requests for Plex yeah, we, we would love to take some requests. If you email the interactives team, uh, interactives at ck12.org, we'd love to start up a dialogue and possibly create some custom clicks based on your plans. Okay, um, we have a question about inserting clicks into Flexbooks or um, resources. How do you suggest that people do that at this time? So the easiest way to do that is just to pull the URL. So you highlight everything up in the HTTPS field and you can just create your own hyperlink or just plop that directly into a Flexbook. Okay, um, somebody's asking is Plix HTML5? So maybe you just wanna explain a little bit about um, kind of how your, your team maybe creates these interactives. Um, so we're using uh, JSX Graph Library, and we use this uh, open source library to build Plix using our in-house Plix tool. And uh, Plix are available, they, have, they should work on all laptops and tablets and computer screens, unless it's like your own little 
cell phone, that would be a little too small for this size. A couple of our users were just asking about grade levels. Um, you can see at the top of the screen where there's different branches, but what suggestions do you have if they're looking for things at different grade levels? And then we have a user who's very interested in um, possibly using these with, with first graders. So any, you think some of these would be appropriate for elementary? Yeah, actually, um, if you're looking through the arithmetic and measurement branches, there's a lot there that's really good for elementary schoolers. Um, a lot of the branches are pretty self-explanatory in terms of uh, geometry, physics, chemistry, et cetera. But um, yeah, I would definitely look through arithmetic and measurement and you'll, you'll find some stuff for younger students. All right, and then we have a question about the PLIX working in one of our CK12 apps. Most of my students use their cell phone to complete assignments at home, and I think you just reviewed what the screen dimensions need to be for accessing PLIX. Yeah, I would recommend a size uh, nine inch screen or larger, like a Nexus 9. On a cell phone, if you try to load it, you'll see some cute little a uh, picture of a bunch of hamburgers or bats or something with a message that says that the screen is too small for clicks. And then maybe just take in um, another question here. Um, somebody asked, is there a good way to search for clicks? So maybe while you're on the screen, just show them a couple of different ways to easily get to the concept that they're seeking. Yeah, no problem. So, well, here I am on the browse page. So let's say on the place you're already here um, and you wanna look for something uh, with lines, for example, you could just search in here and you have a whole bunch of different clicks that you can choose from and just pick around and explore and see what looks good to you. Uh, if you are on the CK12 homepage, you can look up uh, anything like, let's say you're teaching a lesson about Jefferson even. <laughs> uh, the first thing that comes up is a flix. And it's actually a flix that's about uh, graphing inequalities that happens to correlate with some information about Thomas Jefferson. And so you'll find flix both through the browse page or searching around on CK12, or if you were to start with, um, let me go back to the homepage here. If you were gonna go to a concept page for a lesson, let's see. There should be a place over here. Here we go. So on the concept page. So if you're looking around at all your different modalities, you can find a Plix and access it that way as well. Okay, a couple more questions and then we'll start talking about simulations. Um, one user was, uh, was asking about, you just showed how to search for different um, concepts. What about state standards? Do you have any hints if they're looking for certain state standards? Um, and then I'll go ahead and give you the second one right now. Um, uh, I guess earlier when I was asking about levels, I commented on grade levels and uh, this user is asking about skill levels for clicks within a concept because you mentioned some are more difficult than others. Is there any way to easily identify that? So for concepts, we, uh, for the, excuse me, the standards, we do have standards listed uh, here on the browse page or within a click, sometimes in the information. Um, but as for the, the grade level, we don't actually detail by specific grade level on a Plix. And we list all of our Plix at the at grade level uh, rather than advanced or basic. So um, yes, there, there are slightly different levels within a Plix, but I think what I was discussing when I was talking about the, the different challenge levels was within the challenge me questions on a Plix. We start off with more basic questions that relate directly to the interactive. And as the questions build, they get more and more challenging until the last one is a higher level question. So a lot of the times um, you could just start with the first one and then move all the way through. All right, thanks for all that good information, Katie. And um, keep asking your questions in the Q&A window. I think that I'm gonna steal the screen back here and we're gonna get ready for the second part of our webinar. 
um, which is where uh, my colleague Sonia is going to jump on and she is going to talk to you guys about simulations. Thank you, Lindsay, and thank you, Katie. That was fantastic. A great overview of Plex. So, um, hi, everyone out there. It's been really fun to see everyone introduce them in the chat window, and I'm really excited to show you all our CK12 interactive simulations during this next half of the webinar, which we at CK12 lovingly refer to as Sims. And I really believe that they're a groundbreaking new type of digital learning tool, unlike anything else out there. Um, I believe this because they, the goal kind of of our Sims is to overlay the scientific and mathematical principles onto a real world setting. So these Sims support inquiry-based learning and promote students to connect the often abstract STEM concepts with their everyday applications. They differ from the Plix interactives that Katie just reviewed in that they're almost a, more of a portal. So they pull students into this real world setting and there are multiple ways to interact with the simulation, connecting many concepts together in one setting. But like the Plix and other resources at CK12, they are all free. Uh, you just have to sign in to access multiple sims or download the free app to your tablet device and I'll talk more about that. So in this webinar, I will show you how to navigate the sims browse page. It looks really similar to that Plix browse page you just saw. And then I'll help familiarize you with the general structure of the sims. I'll be sure to highlight the many embedded SIM features and resources and share some ideas I have for using the SIMs as an instructional tool in class or at home to differentiate instruction and to dispel some of those common science misconceptions. My main goal, like Katie's, is that by the end of this webinar, you feel excited and equipped to use CK12 simulations in your class. I really just encourage you, pick one SIM and experiment with it, even during that first week of school. I really think your students will be excited. So just kind of um, to start the webinar, I actually used to be a classroom teacher, and this is an actual picture taken of a whiteboard in my physics class a few years ago. And just to give you some context, I spent like my whole lunch period trying to draw this image for my students relating the law of reflection with what they saw in a mirror. And all I had you know, available to me were some whiteboard markers in this whiteboard. Thankfully, CK12 has now provided a, a much more compelling learning tool, and hopefully we teachers can now have time to eat our lunch, right? So the next um, slide here is highlights our prom night sim. And it really is just this collection of sims is a beautiful collaboration between science teachers, animators, and software developers at CK12. So the prom night sim begins with an intriguing question, right? What size mirror do you need to see your entire body? And then if you play, it will advance through a introductory video explaining the basic concepts, posing some further questions to kind of get students to think about the underlying physics in a real world scenario, right? Getting ready for the prom, looking in the mirror so on and so forth. Now I do wanna um, give you some context. I recorded this video kind of on fast forward for purposes of the demo, um, and I'll show you an introductory video at a later time as well. So the next scene of every sim is what we call the sandbox, and Katie kind of mentioned this with the plicks. So the idea is that you know students are just meant to play around, discover new things. Um, there's no like one right way to interact, but you will always find sliders for certain variables, and in this case, responsive animations and many time responsive graphs. And the next um, scene are three questions that can be answered by adjusting the sliders in a certain way. So we call them slider-based questions. And then the last scene of every sim ends with a set of real world examples. And these invite students to kind of think about the applications of the core concepts in different physical situations to promote their continued learning. So hopefully after previewing this sim, you're really excited to see more and we have a lot more. So 
Stay tuned. All right, so here we are. Um, there's many ways to access the Sims from within the CK12 website. And um, I'm just highlighting there on the bottom left, the simulations icon on the home page. That's a nice way to kind of access the browse page. So the web address www.ck12.org forward slash Sims also provides a simple shortcut for you. And maybe if you want to share this, um, you know, shortcut with your students and colleagues, and it provides an easy way to get to the Sims browse page. So our collection um, includes over 120 Sims that, you know, highlight bobsleds, music recitals, swim meets, archery, airplanes, and more. So as you can see, just all these really beautiful real world settings that are hard to replicate in the classroom. So moving on, our collection of Sims are currently divided into two branches, physics and chemistry. So right now you can see on the top left, um, we are looking at the physics tab of the browse page. The first row features three of my favorite Sims for topics commonly taught in a physics classroom around the beginning of the school year. So on the far left, the driverless car sim poses the opening question, how does a self-driving car know where to go? And prompts the students to practice vector addition in a fun way. In the middle there, the at the crossroad sim can be used to teach conversions of systems of measurement. And then on the far right, the Erwin and Ruthie sim, which is one of my personal favorites, allows students to adjust the velocity of two racing robots to learn all about motion and graphing motion. So like I said before, these are all scenarios that are really hard to replicate in the classroom. And although these sims are formally labeled physics, their topical coverage is broad. And like I said, we have over 120. So I, we do have sims that relate to concepts regarding physical science, earth science, astronomy, and math. Like I mentioned, just the driverless car on the left there and at the crossroads, they cover vectors and unit conversions, which relate to math. Even if you're not a physics teacher, I really just encourage you to visit the Sims Browse page and I'm confident you can find something to fit your course and level. And just to be sure to convince you, um, I'd like to highlight some other Sims that can be used to teach important math concepts for all those math teachers out there. Uh, on the top left, the Portrait Gallery Sim is another Sim that can be used to teach vector addition and important concepts related to trigonometry. Both the water fountain and archery sims have to do with projectile motion and involve parametric equations. And then on the bottom right there, the stadium wave sim can be used for a more complicated sinusoid problem. So like I said earlier, although these sims are just formally labeled physics and chemistry, there are many that can be used to highlight the real world applications connected to a variety of STEM concepts. Okay, so going back to the Sims Browse page, um, if you click on the second tab, it will give you access to 15 recently released chemistry Sims that are still in the beta stage of development. So all that means is that you'll see that beginning structure that you're used to in the physics Sims. These chemistry simulations all provide the microscopic explanations for the macroscopic observations of the world around us, which I know is just like core to, um, to all your chemistry classrooms. So hopefully it will help you in this important work. The first three you are looking at here um, on the far left is the going fishing sim. So in this sim, students can explore what makes an object float or sink. And it just does, I think, a really beautiful job of allowing students to visualize density and what that means. In the middle, there's the airbag sim that allows students to investigate the chemical reactions that can cause an airbag to inflate. And then on the right, there is the hot pack, cold pack sim, which provides a great everyday model for students to associate with exothermic and endothermic reactions. 
So I hope you explore and experiment with using these new sims in your classroom. And as Katie mentioned earlier, please provide us with your feedback. There is a link within each sim that says feedback. And we really do check this on a weekly basis. And we love to, to hear what you thought and how it went in your class. So please definitely stay in touch. Another exciting announcement is that we offer a free CK12 physics simulations app for your iOS and Android tablet devices. You can see highlighted there, if you click on that, it will, um, by clicking on either of those two icons, you and your students can easily download the app for free at the App Store or the Google Play Store today. So just a little bit more about the app, I do want to highlight that it is for tablet devices. So if you just happen to be kind of looking at the app store on your phone right now, you won't find it. You'll have to be on a tablet device to see and download that app. All of our Sims, whether accessed online or via the app, require a nine inch screen or larger to view all the sliders and graphs, as Katie mentioned. It just, um, there's so much going on kind of in the simulation, you need that larger screen to really have it be a meaningful experience. The exciting thing about the app is that it allows you and your students to download individual Sims to your tablet devices for offline use. So, I mean, if you're like me, I remember spending, you know, wasting tons of precious class time loading software, guiding students through multiple clicks just to access the simulation. So I just want to be clear that all of these sims are HTML5 based and they can be launched on our website or via the app with just one click. So imagine this, a simple homework assignment involves asking your students to download a particular sim to their tablet device the night before a class period. And when prompted in class, they can all launch the sim quickly and easily without any threat of Wi-Fi or loading issues interrupting your lesson. The CK12 team, we really have worked hard to ensure that you never lose a learning moment in your classroom. So I hope that you'll download the app and explore this, um, this after the webinar. So back to that Sims Browse page, um, there's many ways to use this Browse page to find a Sim for your particular class. You can just simply scroll down. You can type keywords into the search bar. You can see it highlighted on the top left there. Or you can sift through the filters, also highlighted in the left corner. So if you clicked on filter, we allow you to filter our Sims by concept or next generation science standards. These concepts and standards are also listed under each simulation. In addition, there is a worksheet link under each sim. You can see it highlighted there on the bottom. When you click on the worksheet arrow icon, and be sure to click on the arrow there, a worksheet version of this sim will pop up and it can easily be downloaded as a PDF. And there are a variety of ways in which these worksheets can be used. So here's the Erwin and Ruthie worksheet PDF pop-up. I think it's most important to note that all of the embedded features in the sim, so the script for the introductory video, all the slider-based questions with answer space underneath it, the text for the real-world examples, all the information is accessible in worksheet format here. So if internet is an issue at your school, or you'd like a handout that will help guide students in using the Sims, or even if your students just respond better to turning something in, these worksheet resources are currently available for all physics Sims, and the Chem Sim worksheets will be coming soon down the road. So kind of going back to a Sim structure, here are some images of the four main windows in our ramp and piano Sim about force, distance, and work, and how this relationship can be manipulated with a ramp. So I actually used to begin my physics curriculum each year with investigating simple machines, and I think this is a great Sim to introduce students to those important concepts. One of the most unique things about our simulations is their consistent structure. So starting with an introductory video, moving into an interactive sandbox, then answering some slider-based questions, and ending with exploring other related real-world real examples. 
So our entire collection of 120 simulations have this structure. And you will find that after using one or two sims, your students will no longer have to focus their attention on how to use the digital tool. And will be able to instead focus on learning the concepts, which is much more important in my personal opinion. So I think that's pretty exciting. So this is the snapshot of the introductory video of the hot oven sim. And this sim enables students to explore the difference between heat, temperature, and thermal energy. Like all sim intro videos, the font size can be changed by clicking on the top right there. You can play and pause the video at any time. And for repeat users of the sim, the video can also be skipped by clicking skip on the bottom left. So many of these features make the introductory video a really great tool for projecting to an entire class on an overhead projector. So I might project this question on the screen in my class. I would change the font size so students could see it in their seats in the back. And um, I might prompt students to complete a quick write as a warm up activity. So once the bell rings, students put their pen to paper for three minutes. They write whatever comes to mind in response to this question. Then I could imagine pressing play and kind of walking students through this introductory video in a discussion format. This next um, slide here shows the interactive sandbox environment of the Cliff Diver Sim. And this sim allows students to explore the acceleration due to gravity. So in every interactive sandbox, you'll almost always see one or two graphs at the top representing the situation, as well as sliders that allow you to manipulate the basic parameters, as well as a play button. So each slider, if you click the little eye, has an information tag that can be activated to learn more. So a little um, kind of black box will come up with some information on the slider. Now the graphs have many features activated by the gear symbol. So if you click on the gear symbol, users can get information about the graph, zoom in to see the graph more clearly, you can hide the graphs, or even compare two trials by clicking on enable last run. So if we click that gear symbol, a little pop-up box and you can see info, zoom, hide graph, enable last run. I think it would be a great exercise to project the sandbox on a screen in class. I could imagine hiding the graphs and having teams of students work on whiteboards and sketch their predictions regarding what the graphs might look like based on how I set the sliders. Then I could imagine once they're done sketching their predictions, doing a great reveal by dropping the graphs and discussing the results and comparing and contrasting to their predictions. I hope you try that one out. And I also, um, there's a, on the chat bar, it seemed like there was a few elementary um, school teachers or middle school teachers, and that might be an option um, that appeals to you is to just hide the graphs and allow the sliders and the responsive animations to kind of um, help visualize these, you know, important science concepts for your younger students. Okay, so for the next one, um, what I'd like to highlight here now is that the information bar, so that black bar at the top of every sandbox, can be used to differentiate instruction for your students. So this is a big one. Students who are stuck or need more help, there is a tab labeled tutorial right there, which opens a three minute YouTube video screencast that carefully details how the simulation works, made by yours truly. Um, in addition, there's always a link available to concepts that highlight the relevant material in the CK12 website. So there you have access to the reads or videos that align to those concepts. And for students who are up for a challenge, the challenge me questions provide a few related deep thinking, open-ended questions. So I just wanna state here that really in this one interactive environment, students who are struggling are supported Students who are ready to move on are challenged, and all students are prompted to be curious and have fun. 
So this is a snapshot of the slider-based questions in the Sprinter Sim. And you can't really see here, but this sim allows students to explore friction by investigating why sprinters wear spiked shoes for running. So there are great animations of a runner on a track. Now, with these slider-based questions, you receive immediate feedback on your submission. And for all of you teachers, there's a way to create new slider-based questions right there with that plus um, icon. So you, as the instructor, can tailor this sim to your specific course or level. I could envision prompting students to answer the slider-based questions in pairs during class. I could also see the completion of slider-based questions as a great homework assignment. They are included in the SIM worksheet with sufficient space below each question to provide room for students to record their answers and reasoning. So those are just a few suggestions for you. And this is the final scene of, um, of the SIM, a snapshot of the real world examples at the end of the gone fishing chemistry SIM about density and floating that I mentioned earlier. I think it'd be really fun to prompt students to do further research on one of these examples for homework. So I could imagine saying, you know, pick a question that you're interested in, do some research, and bring back some information to share with your classmates the next class period. You can also customize the simulations by adding more real world examples. You can click on that plus icon right there. Another idea would be to prompt students to create their own example and upload it here, adding to our bank of community contributed content. I actually introduced this idea during, during our school year webinars on the interactives, and I'm really excited to announce a few teachers actually took me up on it. So if you go um, to the Gone Fishing Sim, to the real world examples and click that community contributed tab, you'll see that there are over 25 examples now that seem to be student generated. And I just think students would get a thrill out of seeing their work displayed like this. So I hope you'll try it out in the upcoming school year and, and let us know so we can, we can highlight that. All right, so this is um, kind of one of my favorite things to share. So this chart highlights some of the most common science misconceptions, right? This is what gets us science teachers out of bed in the morning, you know? A relate and, and also a related sim that we hope you can use to dispel it. So um, there are some great examples here of misconceptions, and I know you guys all have big smiles out there, you science teachers. So I just, the first one here, particles of solid have no motion, right? Um, a lot of students, we spend a lot of time getting, getting to that one. So um, you can use the building bridges sim, and if I have time at the end, I'll hop on and show you that. Um, but basically it highlights that the solid particles of the Golden Gate Bridge are actually jiggling. Um, the second one there, mass and weight are the same thing. That's my, you know one of my personal favorites. I tried to really hit that hard at the beginning of every school year. And um, we have the astronaut training chamber sim, which is awesome. So basically, it shows the mass on various planets and how that stays the same, but the weight or force due to gravity differs. And this sim even allows students to explore the gravitational constant on Dione, Saturn's moon. So it's really fun. Um, another common misconception is the gravitational force is the strongest force in nature. And I might use the portrait gallery sim to start a class discussion. If gravity is so strong, how does a picture remain hanging on a wall in static equilibrium? So those are just a few ideas of how you can use sims to dispel those misconceptions. All right, so it's just been a really exciting time to be a science teacher, as I'm sure you all know. And I wanna highlight that we do have a lot of sims that connect to current events, such as this black hole sim, that can be used when discussing the recent Nobel Prize in physics that was awarded for the discovery of gravitational waves generated by two black holes. Or even to discuss the difference between black holes and neutron stars, as just this last year, science detected gravitational waves generated by two neutron stars. I just think that this sim is beautiful and I, I really believe that it fosters student interest in modern science. And I also want to say to follow us on Twitter and Facebook because as these events happen, we often tweet out content or simulations that align to these current events. 
Uh, another thing to, to highlight is we, we recently had physics teachers help us translate our sims to German and Korean. And these newly translated sims are live on our site. Um, you can see the arrow there. And there's also a help us translate link that um, we hope that you can provide us with your contact information if you'd be willing to help us translate the sims into additional languages. We would be so grateful for any help you could offer. These translations are really central in helping us achieve our mission of providing free, high quality resources to every student around the world. So I hope you'll consider doing this. Another way you can help us out is to become part of our SIM impact studies. So I actually recently conducted two studies to examine the difference between traditional lecture versus um, using the interactive simulations in teaching physics concepts in a high school classroom. And I presented some of these results at the American Association of Physics Teachers Winter Conference this year. Um, from the last webinar last week, I had a few teachers reach out that they'd be interested. And um, it's very simple and basically we're very flexible. So if you have a sim that you're interested in experimenting with and then maybe just conducting a study on how that sim helped to enhance your student's learning experience, please um, reach out to us via email and um, it would really mean a lot to our sim development team. So that concludes my part of the SIMS webinar. Um, here's a review kind of of everything I just covered. I know that was a lot of information, but overall, I just hope that you will sign up, sign in, download that free app, and really just explore and experiment with using the SIMS in your class, even that first week of school. As you know, because you are all amazing teachers, there really is no better way to learn than to just jump in and try it out. So I'll hand the mic back over to Lindsay. <laughs> Great, thank you. Thank you, Sonia. Um, we did put in the chat window some links to the misconceptions that you were just talking about. I know that that's a, a favorite chart for science teachers to reference. Great. And Sonia, I'm gonna ask you just a couple of questions here. Um, we'll take it from the uh, top. We have um, a question that's asking maybe kind of a little comparison here of saying, I currently use explorelearning.com and FET simulations for my science classes. They have many lessons that go along with each simulation and teacher directions. Is CK12 working on actual lesson plans? That's a great question. And I, I use those tools in my class as well. Um, we are, we currently are working with a group, um, kind of, I have a PhD student who's working on making labs and activities with our sims um, and hopefully like you said within the, the year we'll be we'll be releasing those but we hear you we hear your requests and like i said we we love to make teachers lives easier and i do agree that that activities or experiments that kind of align with the sims would be beneficial so those are in progress but um the release time is probably you know maybe next year to be honest Okay, but meanwhile, we do at least have um, the worksheets that you guys can all download to go with the simulations. Yes. Um, we have a couple of questions here kind of about the, the app. Um, one is just having you confirm that it needs to be nine inches regardless of whether or not uh, the screen needs to be nine inches regardless of whether or not the simulation has been downloaded. And then kind of a follow-up question is once a sim is downloaded through the app, all resources are available to the students. Oh, great question. It's really good. Okay, so the first one is yes, it needs to be a tablet device. So the app won't even, you can't even like access it on a store if your device isn't the right size. So um, it does need to be, you know, tablet nine inches or um, larger. And the second question about offline. So basically, if you download the SIM, individual SIMs, or you can do a group of SIMs, however many you want to download, what will happen is, the, um, for instance, some of those features that I showed you, for example, the tutorial video. Tutorial videos are all hosted on YouTube, but they're just embedded in the SIM sandbox. So those will not be available. But um, what will be available is the introductory video, the SIM sandbox with all the graphs and responsive, inter um, responsive animations and the real world examples. So um, offline, basically, um, those will be accessible, but as far as kind of the toolbar with the tutorial or the concepts, um, some of those things that require 
internet access will become available once you go back online. Okay, and then you kind of already mentioned this earlier, but um, we had a lot of people ask of what's what's next for the simulation specifically. Are we working our way toward biology anytime? Several users wanted to know. Oh, those are great questions. And I think, I mean, the goal is yes, and I see that in CK12's future, um, but basically um, we started with physics simply just for um, programming uh, efficiency physics is you know mostly three variable linear equations and, and basically all of physics is either like you know a slope of a line or the area under a graph so it was um, easy to create this bank of simulations with these graphs overlaid onto the real world then we moved on to chemistry which is more challenging because as you know molecular movement and to program that in a in a correct and accurate way takes a lot of, of programming power and um, to kind of stick with our philosophy of overlaying kind of onto a real world setting was a challenge. So we're sticking with that, we're working hard towards it and there, there will be some more chemistry sims coming soon. So that's the, the next thing that you will see is an increase in our collection of chemistry sims. And then moving on from that, we'll kind of use our experiences and um, to take that, you know, I guess you would say like, take what we've learned from chemistry and apply that to programming simulations with biology. So our goal is, I, I think as an organization, we'd love and we're working towards biology, but they're definitely kind of down the line. Okay, keep your questions coming in the Q&A. Um, Sonia, I'm going to let you just check out the Q&A window while I do some wrap-up information. I do want to talk to you guys about some program information, and then we will stay on after. Um, one request, Sonia, here in a few minutes, I'm going to have you share your screen, and people were asking to see again where that worksheet feature was. So after I do the wrap-up information, we'll let you go live and demo anything that people um, still want to see related to Sims. Oh, that's great. Um, but, okay, so we're doing a little bit of Q&A here. Um, this tools and apps page, this is a handy page. Sonia mentioned it earlier that you can download an app for your simulations. If you want any information about LMS integration or how to get some of these tools and apps from us, this is the link. It's also available in our footer. You would just click on tools and apps in the footer of any ck12.org page. We have an overview page that we think is really helpful for teachers and schools as they're trying to consider all that CK12 has to offer. At the top, there will be an option for you to download a PDF flyer. And then we have a listing of all of our different resources. That plus sign expands to give you additional bullet points. And then there are videos that have teachers and administrators and students talking about our different resources and how they're being used in different settings. So you can always go to ck12.org overview to access that page. Um, live chats, uh, Katie is going to um, post our live chats in the window right now. These are happening on Friday. You can always register in Google Classroom, but to make it easy on you, we've just put the direct registration links in the chat window. Um, we have designed these sessions truly for you guys to chat, not like chat message, but to actually turn on your mic if you would like, and even turn on your video camera if you want, and talk to other people. Um, these are just going to be lightly facilitated by the CK12 team, and really we're just trying to get a group of people together from your area and let you guys have a conversation, um, do a lot of networking, and just talk about what initiatives are happening in your areas. You're welcome to join multiple ones of these, even if you're not in the Midwest, but you want to know what Midwest educators are up to, you can join that session. Uh, all the registration links are in the chat window. The Jumpstart for Educators Cafe is a great place to talk. Um, Katie was showing you earlier um, how to use the, some of the other Jumpstart forms, the specific ones for Plix, where students can enter into the conversation as well. So check out that cafe um, tab that's at the top in your, in your menu options, and um, be sure to do some exploring there and see if there are other cafes that you want to follow um, and join. Our resource page is available in Google Classroom. It was chatted out earlier uh, for your easy access. And there is an assignment that follows this. As we're approaching our, our two weeks of live sessions here, um, remember to be a CK12 certified educator, you do have to watch both of the on-demand sessions, one that happened the first week of July, and we're gonna release the other on-demand session at the end of this week. 
And sandwiched in between, we wanted you attend, to attend five live webinar sessions. In addition to your attendance in those webinar sessions, we do need you to complete these assignments. So you will find those in our Google Classroom. And then any feedback you guys have is appreciated. We have one feedback form for the program. We read all of your comments. We enjoy seeing what you guys have to say, whether it's constructive criticism or you know just, just good shout outs. Let us know what you think. Um, we're very thankful for that. If you need to get in touch with us, if there's any additional questions, jumpstart at ck12.org. Uh, Katie mentioned earlier that we do have an interactives at ck12.org if you want to give them any specific feedback about the interactives. Or if you're confused about email addresses, just email jumpstart or support or something and we'll find a way to get your email to the appropriate party. Um, don't forget to let your social networks know um, about CK12 as well. So, um, I, why don't, Sonia, why don't we go to you if you want to steal the screen back. Um, for you folks who need to head off and all of your questions were answered, you're welcome to do so. Thanks for joining us today. Um, for you guys who want to see where worksheets are and some other demonstrations, we're about to do that right now. All right, so let me share my screen. And you can see my screen now, is that right, Lindsay? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, so basically, I'm gonna just go to CK12, just start everyone on our lovely homepage, and then I'm going to scroll down and hit that simulations icon to access the browse page. And then, um, just for fun, I love the driverless car sim right here in the middle. Um, let's say I want to use this in the first week of school, and um, I think that my students would respond better with having a worksheet next to them. So what I might do is I click right here and make sure to click on the arrow. It's going to pop up. And basically, I'm just going to kind of scroll through real slow. But what the worksheet provides is kind of a shortcut link to that specific sim. And then um, the opening question all of kind of that inquiry driven guided questions in the introductory video. The each slider with the slider information underneath it. And then this is, I think, a really important piece um, a blank graph. So if you want them to, you know, sketch the graphs or actually adjust the sliders in a certain way and then copy what their graph looked like for future reference, so on and so forth. There's a lot of ways you could use these graphs, but they are blank. And the information about the graph is under it. And then we have our slider-based questions with the hint in italicized as well as space underneath. The challenge me questions, which are more of those open-ended discussion questions. There's the link to the YouTube tutorial video, like a little shortcut link here. And then it ends with the real world examples. And each of the real world examples pose questions and then have like a little blurb to answer it and kind of guide students in exploring it further. So, um, and then it ends with the related CK12 concepts and links to those concept pages. So basically every worksheet has this format. And it's, a, it's kind of like a one-dimensional um, portrayal of all the information that the simulation has in this portal that they enter, so. Um, okay, a um, couple more questions for you, Sonia, here, and then we've got a Plix question we'll get to in just a moment. Um, a user says, I noticed the phase change and states of matter sim are very thought-provoking with their questions. Are there any answer keys available for suggested responses? Oh, that's really good. I, those are, thank you for shouting those out. Those are like some of my favorites. And so let's pull one up. Um, what was it? Phase change in states of matter? So. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to open states of matter. Oh, I actually did have it open. This is like one of my favorites. And so um, basically to highlight, yes, the questions are awesome, right? So if ice, water, and steam are all made of H2O molecules, what makes them so different? That is just like, an awesome question that can be answered many different ways. And then you have these great 
um, animations that hopefully just really prompt the student to see this molecular overview of something they encounter every day, right? A glass of ice water. Um, and then the challenge me questions. So basically these questions at this time, we don't provide answer keys simply because the, the goal of these open-ended challenge me questions was that there's you know, multiple ways of answering and multiple examples that could be used to answer them. And, um, and so we wanted to leave them open-ended. However, we do hear you and we, we have kind of um, had some requests for those. So um, we are exploring with maybe in the future on the teacher view um, of the Sims will offer that. But at this time, answer keys are not available um, for those open-ended questions. However, in um, the sliders, so um, here is the astronaut training chamber sim. Um, I'm going to click through that introductory video, click through the sandbox, and I'm going to um, access a slider-based question. For these questions, there's a hint here you try it and you get immediate feedback. I'll show you. So basically, um, you can try it out and submit. And it'll say, oh, your answer is incorrect, try again. When you exit, your answer is recorded. And so um, in this case, you do have access to that immediate response and your answers are recorded. And then once you get it right, those answers are recorded. And something I, I would like to highlight at this time is all our sims are mathematically accurate. So in the case of this sim where you're using a force mass graph um, and plotting a line, the slope of this line is actually the gravitational constant on that planet. And if you plug the numbers in, um, you can actually, you know, solve for the gravitational constant on Mars using um, 300 and 1000 um, and the equation F equals mg. So basically you can use these answers and the numbers to cal make calculations and they are all mathematically accurate. Thank you for doing that walkthrough, Sonia. I'm gonna let you take just a, a time out here for a second. And I'm gonna ask um, Katie a question. We can stay on your screen though. Um, uh, uh, users asking, are most or all of your clicks already embedded in CK12's Flexbooks or are they only separate? And then also, are there any assessments that can be printed for clicks? Hey, so we have, like I said, over 1,130 clicks. That's a lot. <laughs> so no, not most of them are embedded in the flex books, but we do have quite a few uh, because we currently only have the Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2 books out right now. We have clicks that are associated with those branches embedded in those. But for example, all the science ones and other branches are, are not embedded. And we do not currently have any printable uh, Plix resources that go along with them. Okay, um, a couple of questions, I think back to, back to you, Sonia. Um, are cross, or asking about cross reference, um, references that link science sims to relevant math concepts. I know you mentioned this earlier, but do you have any specific tips on that? That's a really good um, question. So, Basically, with that, I would say you might have to kind of just do some exploring with our collection. So, for example, I'll just open the Erwin and Ruthie sim that I mentioned earlier. So, this is like you have two racing robots, and what happens here is you can change how fast they run. So, Erwin, I can make them hustle or be lazy or confused, and then I'll make Ruthie um, run aggressively. So then if I press play, what happens is, um, right, these graphs respond and a line appears on these graphs. So basically, like the math skills here that can be used are um, the displacement of a velocity time graph, right, is the area under the curve. And then the slope of a velocity time graph is the acceleration. So you can actually calculate like, how each robot was accelerating and how far each robot um, traveled and then position time graph, the slope is the velocity. So basically, um, in short, it, it depends on kind of 
what math skill a lot of these sims rely on graphing so if we click on cliff diver you'll see kind of that same repetition of um, either like a linear plot or the area under a curve so here the velocity time graph and the position time graph and um, and those numbers have meaning right in this real world setting um, and I'm trying to think of another um, example here. You can try bobsled, the centripetal force. Um, I'll show you one tool that might be useful on CK12. So basically, like I said, a lot of you know physics graphs, they're you know um, require mathematical equations, and whether it be like parabolic or exponential or linear. Um, so really, I think it would it would depend on kind of what math skills. You were teaching and then exploring our collection to find a sim that that kind of illustrated that type of equation with our simulations um, i do want to just hop on um, the website there is this thing like our concept maps it is in a beta stage of development but basically i'll show you kind of how to get to it so it it is just like i said new and we're experimenting with it um, but if you go, let's say to physics, I know how to access it here, and you click on concept map, what will come up is basically like this concept. So let's say, um, so we can go with reflection. And um, what should happen is as you can see here, I have everything in green is like a science concept and everything in blue is a math concept. And then through that, so let's say I'm a math teacher, right? And I want to teach reflection symmetry and I'm interested in like, are there physics simulations that might help me with this? Or, so what I can do is I can then go here and I see, okay, here's a physics concept that relates to this. So if I click on that, basically um, total internal reflection, on the sims browse page i can go to total internal reflection and i have a sim here that might get me like i said one step closer or cut some time down on trying to find a sim i can use in my math class or geometry class for that concept so here an intriguing question why do diamonds sparkle and then the sandbox um, kind of talks about light bouncing through different materials and reflecting and refracting a certain way. So um, I could imagine this being used in a geometry classroom because it has to do with angles and um, and how and you know how light bends in essence or reflects. So there is that concept map available to link those for you and then all of our sims are searchable um, through concept name. Um, awesome, Sonia. Thank you for that. And if, if anybody needs any more specific um, kind of hints on Sims, again, you're welcome to email jumpstart CK12 and just tell us what it is you're looking for. And, you know, not putting Sonia on the spot, she can kind of dive into the, all the Sims offerings and give you some content recommendations if yeah, you true. need them. Um, let's see, David has a more general question of, I can't seem how to add, seem, seem to find how to add additional subjects to my homepage. I guess you're talking about the stars that you select some of those when you register and uh, when, you, when you sign on for CK12, but I think you can add more of those at any time. Um, hang on, I'm, I'm asking somebody in my room to, to try it here. Um, how does he add more subjects? Because you selected those um, when you signed on. Oh, Sonia, you're still demoing live, do you know? If you go to ck12.org. Here, let's take a look here. So basically, I'm actually in, um, my, in my son's okay. account. So. If you go to your dashboard. Okay. And add if subjects. You, yeah, right. if you click on add subjects right there. Okay, okay, so I'm on my dashboard here. I have add subjects, and then um, I can select some let's say science subjects and physics, chemistry, biology, or some math subjects, geometry, and then update my profile. Perfect. Okay, um, thank you to everybody who's joined us today. Our Q&A window is empty. You can email jumpstartck12.org with any additional questions. Otherwise, thank you, and we hope to see you again um, later on this week. Goodbye.